Space for worship this morning. I am glad to welcome you here. Um, my name, for those of you who are tuning in from outside the community, is Lisa Smith, pastor of this particular church gathering, and we're glad to welcome you here. If you have children who are watching this morning, we have a great new feature on our website that's uh, by our live stream button, and it will lead your kids, because I know most of you have multiple uh, apparatus to view things on. It will lead your kids to a really well done uh, Sunday school and time for singing and dancing and learning about Jesus. And so we invite you to take a look at that site as well. You are invited this morning to participate with our e-liturgists who will be following comments and posts that you're putting on not only our website, but on Facebook Live. And if you have prayer requests, please be sure to lift those up to those uh, comments and posts, and we will include those in our prayers later in our service. So let us begin with singing together. Good morning, everybody. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribes and the Pharisees. They would not dance, and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me, and the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They cut and they stripped me and they hung me high. And left me there on the cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body but I thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you on Wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dancing. They cut me down, but I lift up high. 
I am the light that will never ever die. I'll live in you if you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance and he dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and he and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance and he. So dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance and he. still guiding us and still with us, that he walks beside us constantly. And this is a song about that. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, won't turn back, I know you are near I will fear no evil For my God is with me And if my God is with me Who then shall I fear? Who then shall I fear? Cause oh no, you never let go Through the calm the storms, oh no, you never let go, every high and every low, oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me, and I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, a glorious light beyond all compare, there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we'll live to know you here on the earth. And I will fear no evil, for my God is 
And the best manifestation of that is that we never let go of one another. So together, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship in prayer. The Lord calls us together from all the ends of the earth. Come, let us pray together in whatever way we can. Let us pray and act together on earth. Lord, we confess We would rather look toward heaven than earth. How easy it is as humans to skip to the end. We want the kingdom to come right now and have trouble learning that there is work to be done in the in-between. We have forgotten how to be community. Remind us how to eat, pray, and live in harmony even when we cannot see and touch one another. Let's take a moment for silent and personal prayer and confession. Christ sends no one out alone. He sends the Holy Spirit before us, companions along the way, and Christ promises to return once again. Be comforted by the ever-present grace and forgiveness of God. Tell one another the truth. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hi, folks. Daryl here. I know this is a difficult time right now and there's a verse that I always think of in the Bible that always brings me comfort and I want to share that with you. 
Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, even through this very difficult time, we need to always remember that our Lord is always with us. And so with that, I also have a little song that I'd like to share with you. But of course, I'm not going to sing it by myself. So I've invited, well, I've invited my brother, Daryl, and my other brother, Daryl, and of course, <laughs> my other brother, Daryl. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Oh, what a good looking guy. Yeah, we're good. good. Guys. good. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, good. So yeah. I'm great. With that, we'll give a little pitch and we'll start this song. <laughs> Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without Thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the loads of life unaided. I need Thy strength to lean myself upon. Be me, Lord, and then if dangers threaten, if storms and trials burst above my head, if flashing seas leap everywhere about me, they cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be me, Lord, no other gift or blessing thou couldst bestow would with this one compare. A constant sense of thy abiding presence, where I am to feel that thou art near. For joining. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Nice see you guys. Good to see, see you guys. guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good morning from Riverside Canyon Hills. I hope everyone out there is doing well and starting to settle into our new normal. For me, that means a lot of chores at home and, of course, lots and lots of pictures of our little Alex. But for me, the routine still includes heading into work every day at our Inland Empire Bureau for Channel 7 and helping share what's happening in our community with all of our viewers. During the pandemic, I've been an eyewitness to our heroes on the front lines at local nursing homes stricken with outbreaks, to the giant United States Navy ship Mercy that left San Diego a few weeks ago. But Lisa wanted me to spend a few minutes talking about some of the good that we're witnessing locally, especially from members of our own congregation and especially our Canyon Hills community. That starts with one of our heroes, and there are many in the congregation on the front lines during this pandemic, Isabel Little, a speech pathologist at Bellevue Hospital in New York City. It's one of the hardest hit hospitals in the region. Isabel works with patients who are on those life-saving ventilators, and she helps survivors learn the most basic of things, how to swallow properly, regain speech, and she also helps with memory loss from the trauma. Meanwhile, we're making many memories of our own during this pandemic, and part of our new normal involves virtual gatherings. And while they don't involve handshakes or hugs, it does allow us to have that face-to-face -face connection, which is so important for us. We've seen virtual happy hours. We know the power of small groups and will continue to offer virtual places for people to meet, pray, learn, and grow in their faith. Member Christine Sickler told Lisa she's now meeting every Tuesday morning on Zoom for a Bible study. Heck, even my mom, who is scared to death of anything with an on and off button, has gotten used to the idea of Zoom. But we've also been witness to what one of our members, Gretchen Dooling, said. It seems like Earth itself is taking a little break. 
Andrea took this video of the rain at our house last week. And when's the last time we've had this much rain in the middle of April and a fresh blanket of snow in our local mountains? Maybe it's time to stop thinking about our own confinement and take a look at what's happening to Mother Earth right under our noses. God sent a flood before. Maybe, just maybe, this is what we all need right now to do simpler things, to enjoy more simple living, and enjoy those things we used to take for granted, like the flowers and special scenes around our neighborhood. God is taking care of business for his children and for our earth. And speaking of taking care of business, we're doing that at Fellowship Hall right now. Amidst all of this chaos, a team of dedicated leaders from our church was able to harness enough focus to get our reconstruction process started. Lisa says it was an unceremonious groundbreaking to be sure. Nevertheless, we're underway. RVM Construction Incorporated was awarded the contract last week and began the final phase of demolition to begin actual reconstruction. So when it is safe to gather again, we will have the space to do so responsibly. So a big thanks to our reconstruction team of Pete Lapsich, Bruce Kidd, Jerry Conry, Doug Brown, Vanessa Bates, and Jim Bogenreef, who continue to serve our congregation under the most difficult of circumstances. So that's our report on some of the good things we've been witness to over the past few weeks. We miss you all and we'll see you soon. Bye. How can you not smile after listening to Daryl and to Rob share with us some great good news that is happening out in our community, in our own homes, um, and things that we can focus on as we are working our way through the restrictions that we are under right now, but looking forward to how community will unfold into the future. So I am so grateful for the blessings of our congregation and the talents that they have to share with us, even as we worship apart but together at the same time. Today, the scripture for us comes from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles following Jesus's resurrection starts with chapter one, verse one and has the disciples collected together. And Luke, the author of Acts, tells us this. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote to you about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up into heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly... Two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath's day walk from the city, when they arrived, 
They went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They were all joined together, constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Our gracious and loving God, you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, the one who died on a cross for us, for our forgiveness of sins, and the one who was raised from the dead that we might have eternal life and that we might enter the kingdom of God as it comes to us on earth. Be with us this day as we hear the words that you have for us and are inspired to be disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. In the African-American preaching tradition, you might hear a preacher say, can I get a witness? After making an important point in the sermon, can I get a witness? As the preacher is looking for a response from the congregation, inviting them into participation with the sermon, with shouts of affirmation and shouts of collaboration with the message. Can I get a witness? Invite shouts of amen and alleluia. Preach it. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm, that's right. And my kids' favorite that they learned from Reverend Oliver, Oliver Lee, well, can I get a witness? Is a call and response style of preaching that encourages active participation in the preaching of the word. You can practice this today in the confines and the privacy of your own home. Let's see how you respond as we ask for a witness this day. The phrase, can I get a witness, has been playing in my head on and off this week as I prepared for this Sunday. Can I get a witness reminds me of another time in our history when we had collective anxiety and apprehension, the ramping up towards Y2K. If you're old enough, you remember. You remember the doomsday predictions about the world grinding to a sudden halt as technology and computer systems would fail as they crashed. If we had not taken the right precautions There were imagined global power outages and communication blackouts and planes falling from the sky. I'm reminded of this particular time in history because on Y2K, I was with a group of our students from our church in Indianapolis, Indiana at a youth conference that was hosted especially for the Y2K event, especially for the turning of the millennium. In the early planning stages of this event, the church anticipated tens of thousands of youth to come and to be together on Y2K. They had had so much success in their previous youth conventions with six and seven and eight thousand youth gathering at Purdue for Triennium, eight and nine thousand youth gathering at Montreat events at the same time. So of course there would be tens of thousands that would come for this particular event, a three-day spiritual extravaganza that included some of the best worship and the best music, and the best preaching of the day, alongside a festival of games and recreation, hangouts and discussion groups. And it all climaxed with a concert by Kirk Franklin and New Nation. Now, for those of you who don't know Kirk Franklin and New Nation, you're at a computer, you can Google it. And you can enjoy the sounds of gospel music that make you want to dance. 
But the fear of Y2K took hold. And instead of tens of thousands of students flooding the RCA dome, it was merely 1,600 or so brave souls. For those of us who did attend, it was an event like no other. Worship leaders like Jars of Clay, Michael W. Smith, and Stephen Curtis Chapman were all there. And we had the run of a giant NFL stadium all to ourselves. It was beyond remarkable. And I cannot wait until my grandchildren ask me, no, I don't have grandchildren yet, but when I do, I cannot wait for my grandchildren to ask me, where were you at the turn of the millennium? And I can say that I was with 16 other witnessing Christians at the Presbyterian Dawn to Epiphany event, worshiping to the sounds of Kirk Franklin and New Nation, asking, can I get a witness? And their song, Stomp. Following Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples... They were still shell-shocked. They were still experiencing confusion and fear and anxiety. Luke tells us in those opening verses of the book of Acts that the resurrected Christ had been with his disciples for 40 days. He was teaching them still about the kingdom of God and still about the power of the Holy Spirit. Then he tells them, to wait, to wait, to gather in Jerusalem and shelter in place, to isolate, to quarantine, to wait for what is next. Waiting is often the hardest thing of all. Waiting for results, waiting for the birth of a baby, waiting for your kids to come home after curfew, waiting to hear about a job offer, waiting by the bedside of a loved one, waiting for college entrance letters, waiting. The time seems so vacuous. Waiting without knowing what is next. How does this play out? What should we do in the meantime to keep ourselves busy and occupy our time? We are waiting. While the disciples are waiting, Luke says they again want to know if now, finally, the kingdom of God will be realized on earth the way that they have imagined. Jesus just tells them to wait. That soon they will see beyond their imagination how the kingdom of God will be expressed on earth and they themselves will be witnesses They will usher in the kingdom. They will be the actors in God's story of redemption. But first, they wait. They wait and they pray. Luke says, while in Jerusalem, they sheltered in place in an upper room, and they devoted themselves to prayer. The disciples that followed Jesus, the women that had been with Jesus, even Jesus' own mother, they were together, sheltered in place, and they prayed. They wait, and they pray that the cross and the resurrection can reshape their imaginations about the coming kingdom of God. They were still stuck in their old imaginations when they asked Jesus again about restoring Israel. They were stuck in their old imaginations 
when they asked about the restoration of Israel as an institution. But Jesus wants them to imagine more. Imagine differently. Imagine beyond the confines of institution. Preaching professor Matt Skinner says this, the waiting has an active quality to it, going beyond merely sitting around and contemplating the past and the future. The apostles were waiting in that secluded room and they were praying. And while the group was sequestered, they were expectant. In their waiting, they were obeying Jesus' recent commands. And they were getting ready for the wild stuff that was yet to come. In their waiting, they were attentive to God so that they might respond when the time is right. They wait in the context of enormous but not yet fully developed expectations. They live in uneasy anticipation about these new realities that Jesus has initiated. In time, the the disciples and the apostles and the arrest of Jesus' followers will be moving outward, bearing witness to Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, but not yet. Not yet. They are asked to wait so that in time they will understand the realities that Jesus spoke about, the kingdom of God, the forgiveness of sin, the release of things that bind people. Those are the things that will come into clear view. So they wait so they can be witnesses. We wait. We wait in isolation now. And if we are like the disciples, we will pray. We will pray that the events of Holy Week and Easter, we will pray that the cross and the resurrection will reshape our imaginations for this world. We will pray that we will be able to let go of our old expectations and the rigid religious confines and be ready for the Holy Spirit so we can be a witness. So we can share the information that we know about how God works in the world so that we can share the evidence that we have about Jesus Christ and the values of the kingdom of God. These are challenging times indeed, my friends. We are confronting fear and anxiety while we wait. Now is the time to be in prayer, to be in reflection, to allow our imaginations to take us to the place where the kingdom's values are. To take us to the places of justice and righteousness and care and compassion in new ways. Now is the time that we wait and we pray that we can be a witness to the kingdom on earth where everyone has a home to stay at home in, where everyone has access to food and clean water and shelter, a place where pandemics cannot threaten anymore. And what will we be able to tell future generations about how we experienced the coronavirus pandemic of 2020? What kind of witness will we have to speak into our community, into our culture, even into our own church 
and the religious institutions of our day? Can I get a witness? Will you be Jesus Christ's witness about the kingdom of God? We will wait. We will pray. And the power of the Holy Spirit will stir our imaginations so that we can be a witness. Amen. So while we wait, we pray, and we want to remind those of you who are participating live that you are invited to share your comments and your prayer requests. We will be collecting as many as we can to share during our prayers of the community as we are inspired by our friend Philip Park and Psalm 23. A traditional psalm, Psalm 23, shepherd me, O God.
Following each of the requests for prayer today, please join us in the refrain, Lord, hear our prayer. For the millions being impacted each day by this pandemic, the loss of life, the complications, those recovering, Lord, hear our prayer. For the healthcare workers and others in essential businesses, like grocery stores, pharmacies, deliveries, first responders, city workers, and others who are on the front lines of this crisis, giving all for our sake. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Eshelman's son and daughter-in-law, pregnant with twins, COVID positive, and now hospitalized due to premature labor. Lord, hear our prayer. For Claudia Egan's nephew son, Christopher, who is three and a half and has been fighting leukemia and is now being made comfortable as they have exhausted all treatment options. Lord, hear our prayer. Colby Egan's daughter, Lucy, hospitalized at Chalk with a skin infection that's been difficult to diagnose. Colby reports that she's been a trooper, but they're praying for some answers very soon. Lord, hear our prayer. For Everett Fink, undergoing cancer treatments. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tim Kinsman, recovering from very serious heart surgery. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nathan, the roommate of the son of Christine Sickler, who is waiting for COVID testing results for his girlfriend. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jeff Caston, nurse practitioner. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray also for my lovely daughter who you saw in that video, Isabel Little, who works at Bellevue Hospital in New York City, as well as everyone facing this crisis that is hitting so hard in New York City. Lord, hear our prayer. Any more requests? Not at the moment. All right, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we heard Lisa's words. We wait, we pray. That is hard for us, dear Lord. We are a people who likes action, who likes certainty, who likes security under our feet. And yet every day through our lives, you have told us you are our security. You are our safety net and our blanket. We need to rest in that knowledge that you have a path for us. Dear Lord, fill our hearts, fill our minds with this certainty with this faith that you are the path and it is laid out before us, though we may not see it. Dear Lord, we ask that you reach out to each and every person who is feeling this pain and this struggle right now, that you lift their hearts, you lift their spirits, you strengthen their bodies, and you allow them to take in your energy so they may be that love and that strength for one another. We ask this prayer as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, there is, in some sense, the call to being Christian, uh, that it's absurd our, our call to Christianity, our call to follow Christ is, is an absurdity. When, when uh, we're, we're called to wait, when there's so many things to do, we're called to rush in when everyone else is rushing out. Being a Christian means doing things because we're called to do them by Jesus Christ, even when the wisdom of the world says they're foolishness. 
And that puts us out there a little bit. Most of us have arrived at the place we are in our life because we've made the right decisions. We've done the, the smart things with our, with our finances, with our, our, our educations, with our works. We've advanced into where we are now because we've done things according to the rules. We've followed what is wise and smart and prudent. And now we sit in the middle of a crisis and, and God is calling us to be imprudent. God is calling us to, to set a tone that changes the world. That when we reach the other side of this crisis, we are at a new normal. And part of that, part of that is, is that we as a church stand here and say that there is still need. There is still need in the world. And so if your heart has been, been touched, if your soul has been uh, made fertile uh, by, by the lesson this morning or by the music that we've had, we ask that you consider doing what is crazy. And that is, uh, while the world is telling us we need to pull, pull back and, and make sure that we are safe and secure, we as Christians acknowledge that there are people for, that, for whom that is not a, po- a possibility, that there is no safe harbor And for that reason, we give, we reach, we go to that world that is suffering and hurting and in desperate need. And so this morning, uh, we ask that uh, if you would visit our website and uh, if if you feel led by God, uh, give a gift this morning uh, to further our ministry uh, in the community, our ministry to those who are are suffering and and hurting, um, and our ministry of, 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 of encouragement to you each week. Also on our website, you can find all sorts of other things that we are doing, different ways that you can connect uh, with other humans, uh, with other Christians, with other people for for your own encouragement uh, and peace of mind. Uh, If you need someone to reach out to, please visit our website. We have lots of different groups that are meeting uh, as well. Uh, This week, we'll be gathering uh, each day uh, for our, our, uh, to go through our daily devotional. Uh, and so if you like our Facebook page or, or visit our website, you'll get a notification uh, when we go live for our daily devotionals. So we'd love to invite you to those, uh, as well as one of our other uh, Bible study groups or, or encouragement groups that happen during the week. So thank you for participating in the mission of Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church and the mission of Jesus Christ in the world. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Rianne. Thank you, all of you who have been leading. Bill, Roger, Lee, Leslie, Vanessa, Annie, Rianne. Did I get you all? Quinn, Lynn. Hi. Thanks. We're all standing 6,000 feet apart, so we're good. As we have been encouraged this day, we began with Lord of the Dance. We're encouraged to dance. The music that is in my head from the Y2K event from the Presbyterian Youth uh, Group event causes me to want to dance. It causes me to want to use my imagination. So I encourage you as we leave this place to sit and wait and pray. And in that, be inspired to dance, be inspired to imagine, be inspired to create artwork, to create designs There's a reason why often the shower is the chamber of the Holy Spirit. It's a place where you relax and you let down and you can let in the wild and crazy imagination of the Holy Spirit. So while we wait, we wait together and the Holy Spirit will come And we will be released out into the world to be a witness. So look for those ways this week. Look for those ways, people of God, that you will be a witness to the kingdom of God into our world. And as we close our time together, we will sing, May the Road Rise Up. Let us go in peace.